<laughs> Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Diaries of a Working Couple. I'm Jamie. And I'm Chris. <laughs> Someone had their sugar today. Or their whatever's in that cup. This is a Captain and Coke. Nice. Well, did you know a group of dragons is called a thunder? A thunder? Thunder. Like as in thunder and lightning? Yep. Hmm. Where who who defined that? I don't know. Where did you read that? In a book. Is it a book of real facts? Why would I or read true a book? things? Why would I read a book of fake facts? You definitely have a book that has fake things in there. Hmm. Doubt it. It's called fiction. Nope. Don't own fiction. Everything I own is one hundred percent real. If you listened to our episode last week, oh boy. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know uh, what? You guys are in for a treat, though, because we we're recording this episode right after that episode. Yeah. So. so we are still in the same day, which means that my day hasn't been going so well, but we are rolling now. We I'm are... feeling good. Last episode kind of broke the, you know, <laughs> broke the seal here, and now we're just driving along. <laughs> I don't know if breaking the seal is the exact term you wanted to use. Okay, but give me a new term then. I don't know. Brush the rust off? I was thinking something like that with rust, but then I was just like, nope, breaking the seal. Bold choice, dear. Yeah. Getting things flowing. You know, the blood's are flowing. I'm loose. I'm happy. Getting things flowing and breaking the seal are not things that we should be, uh, they, they are not the proper terms, I don't believe. This is our Christmas episode. Christmas time is here. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the words other than that. Yeah, but it's exciting. I enjoy Christmas a lot. I uh, It never used to be. I don't, I don't think I ever used to really have a favorite holiday. But it is it has become my favorite holiday. As a kid, you weren't excited for Christmas? I was excited for Christmas, but for us, it was always difficult because we were always... It, it, Christmas was just a lot of travel for us. Yeah. It was always a lot of travel. It was always very close to Christmas, and we could, never could take our like everything that we wanted to take with us. Did you... Were you able to sleep on Christmas Eve night? No. Yeah, I was Absolutely. usually up until probably four in the morning, and then I would fall asleep and wake up at like seven, and then get ready to go. No, I actually got to the point where, um, when we were older, me, Zach, and Jake would all sit in one of our rooms. It was either Zach's or mine. It was usually Zach's, I think. Um, and we would like play cards and just like hang out and like shoot the shit until Barry could sleep until probably 10 or 11 o'clock was he always like that yeah he would always sleep in on christmas morning and i was always the one that was super excited trying to get him to wake up it was rough i wanted wanted to play with my toys yeah well if you ran into his room screaming oh my gosh oh man jamie is in for it when we go to have kids man was i the loudest kid I see he keeps telling me this but I've yet to see proof of it. Well, yeah, one of these days we're going to take well we ha- we have a VHS player. We should go over to my parents' house and we should grab one of our home movies and 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 play it so that you could see what our future children are going to be like, but holy crap, get ready to get some earplugs and you know, possibly kick me across the room because kick you across the room? yeah sure i I just like i was so annoying as a kid uh though you know it sounded like from your what your mom says that you know you guys weren't as excited of a bunch as i was we were not as energetic i was so excited on christmas morning when i would wake up and get like a gift that i've been wanting for a long time it's just like i would be screaming and yelling running around with that gift super excited yeah and it doesn't sound like you guys were that way no well so i i usually got a lot of clothes there weren't as many toys um and usually for me it was a lot of if it wasn't clothes it was a lot of cds books like kind of like 
things I could sit and listen to and just kind of do my own thing. Yeah, I guess. Like, what about when you were younger, though? All right? Like, think, like, 10 years old. What was something that you really wanted? 10 years old. What grade would we have been in? I don't know. Like, fourth grade? Third grade? Fourth grade? I think that was fourth grade. Yeah, fourth grade. <sighs> fourth grade, I would have wanted... Hmm... Like, probably. I'm sure at that age, oh, if you got, I, if you got wanted... clothes, you would probably be disappointed. Oh, I always got clothes. Yeah, I mean, we always... We got clothes to a certain extent. But see, but... I really wanted clothes from Aeropostale because they always had monkeys on them, and I really liked monkeys. Okay. So I would get that, and then I would get the spiky ball earrings from Claire's because I think fourth or fifth grade was the first year I actually got my ears pierced. Interesting. Yeah. Let's talk about a controversial topic. To wrap or to not wrap gifts? For who? Children. From who? Parents. Yeah. But you said your parents never did that. No. I said Santa never wrapped our gifts. Okay, so... Let me rephrase then. Santa to the kids. Honestly, I feel like that's just a waste. Oh. Yeah, see, your family poor, did it. Your poor family Santa did this. Your and family... all of his elves have to go through all of this wrapping. They've already had to make the toys and box them up properly. Your family did this a lot differently than our family. And it'll, it'll be interesting when we have a child, which strategy Santa's going to take. Will it be? I think so, because I think that there's something special about wrapping every gift that that you guys missed out at, you know, you missed out when you guys were children. Who's going to be wrapping these gifts, dear? I guess I'll have to be if you don't want to, but I mean, I don't know. I think there's something special about wrapping each individual gift and get like, that's like, isn't that like the whole excitement thing about Christmas? Like when you're little... You go down under the tree, you see all these wrapped presents, and you go just start tearing them open. And you, You're looking at me like I'm crazy right now. That's because I never had that experience. I never came down and saw, saw we had a huge pile of toys under the tree, and we had to just start ripping open. Okay. That was not, So that's, that's a very different thing for me. This year we're going to treat Christmas differently. Our Christmas between each other. I know we wrapped each other's gifts last year. We're going to do it again, but now we're going to run down the stairs super excited and just start furiously ripping <laughs> them open. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see about that. So the way my mom ran Christmas was that um, we all sat around the tree. So first, we woke up, and both me and Barry had to be up, and my parents had to be up, obviously. Um. My, my dad would always go downstairs and have to get his coffee. And then once he had his coffee, he had to go get his camera or video camera or whatever he was getting and get it all ready to go. And then I'm pretty sure we have a lot of this on film of us walking down the stairs together to so, get to the tree. And then you hear us first. You probably hear me in the videos <laughs> scream. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so i just saw like the audio spike super hard when i did that but yeah you probably heard me scream as loud as i can about how many gifts there are so did you guys get a lot of like a lot lot of gifts or no reason i, I think my parents my parents um I think they went above and beyond on Christmas, but it's not like, like, I feel like so, growing up, there was a lot of kids my age that were getting, they would just get things throughout the year. Like they want a skateboard or something. And like their parents would be like, okay, like, you know, he wants to go skateboard. We'll buy him a skateboard. But like my parents were very conservative throughout the year, but Christmas is where they really went bigger. So the reason I ask is because like, so after like we'd come down the stairs and see everything sitting there um and s n like more recently my mom started just putting everything in two large boxes she would wrap the very large boxes 
But like thinking about it, so if everything was wrapped individually, do you know how many pairs of jeans and shirts and dresses I got and how many oh, pairs like- of shoes? And so it's like if we wrapped it all, even if you like put an entire outfit together or something and put it in a box, it's a fuck ton of boxes. Yeah, but like, you know, if my mom got me like three pairs of jeans, she would just wrap all three pairs of jeans in one thing. So, like, I would say that most Christmases, even now, up to this point, I probably get a pack of socks, a pack of <laughs> underwear. Um, I might get one or two boxes that have, like, shirts in them or, like, a hoodie in them. Um, so, I would say, like, maybe for, for me and Barry as boys, we would probably get, like, five or six boxes or wrapped items that are m- most likely clothes. Okay. Um, but then the rest, you know, as kids, were mostly toys and stuff. And then, you know, as we got older, it I mean, they're into... still toys, just of a different variety. Yeah. Like, now, like Barry, and... yeah, Barry always gets tools and stuff. Um, I think, like, you know, the last few years, like, you know, they got me a three D printer one year, and um, more adult toys now. Yeah. But and, and usually, like, you know, I think they went pretty big um when we were kids and like now now our toys are more expensive so you usually you know they probably kept the budget around the same but our toys are more expensive so like you know they just yeah we get, we like, it. We get like a bunch of clothes or stuff and then like maybe like one or two bigger items and well and that's so that's why i was asking because i know like that's that's just so much wrapping it is. That is so much wrapping. So, yeah. So, how much time do you guys spend around the tree, like on doing presents? Mm, maybe an hour, hour or two. Really? Because like a half. I feel hour, like, hour and a half. I feel like now when we do presents with your family, and I think this is totally fine for adults. Like I think that actually this is a preferred strategy because, you know, we're. We don't need to unwrap a bunch of gifts or whatever to appreciate what we're getting, you know. So, like, I, and I think it does speed things up. I think now it takes a lot of pressure off of people. Like, a lot of people don't like opening gifts in front of other people. So, like, having everybody open everything at the same time. Well, and that's that was the other – well, I can't say that's another – like that was the other reason why but another good thing about doing it the way my parents did it where it wasn't wrapped or anything we didn't have to worry about unwrapping everything and waiting because we just had everything there and like you can just kind of see as you go and see what you're like mom and dad can see what you gravitate towards and what they're like super excited about and what they're not super not not that they're not super excited but you know what I mean and it's like it's it's helpful but i mean again i don't remember ever doing it any other way where we all just go down and like we all see what we get and then as we're going through things if we got something that we think our siblings would like or we see that they got something that's really cool you're like oh my gosh did you see you know what i mean it's just like it's less cleanup and we just get like right into like what we have yeah versus like okay now i'm waiting like what do i have it's like all the anticipation that's what i think that makes it like special or like more special where like i don't know we all sit around the tree and literally we go well for my parents it's more like they just tell like barry will open one then i'll open one or like if they got us something similar they'll be like all right you open this one and you open this one and they're the same um like underwear or socks or whatever but like (laughs) um and then as you start to get to like the more special gifts like i think like last year when i give you your cricket and stuff like i like mark yeah the you bigger marked. gifts so that like i want you to open those last because like and i'm gonna do the same this year too so like you know whatever gift that i think is gonna be more more special to you like i'm gonna mark it differently so that you open that one last see and that's gonna suck because i don't have anything that's gonna be like really special for you i just want it doesn't matter. I don't. I, it does matter. Though. Anything that you get me, I will appreciate. To me. It matters to me. I will love anything that you give me. <laughs> the look that I'm getting here is just. Let me tell you, Christmas has been a a hot topic in our household for a while, because Chris put a budget on me, which means I 
he he put a limit on on my love essentially because my I love to show appreciation and show love by gift giving and he's telling me I can't gift give as much as I want to so I just feel like I personally am at a place where like I don't really need a lot of stuff you know you don't need it you also didn't need a one wheel but I really wanted it. Exactly. That's what Christmas is about. Were you going to buy me a one wheel for Christmas? No, but Christmas is about what you want, not what you need. Yeah. So That's why no one wants socks and underwear for Christmas. Okay, but you need them. So it's just like, you know, if I never got, if my mom never gave me socks or underwear God. for Christmas, you would literally the, be imagine the holes house. that I would have. And it, it would no, be you totally, literally would not even have underwear. It would totally be fine with me, but you would be so mad. So be yeah. thankful. Anyway. <laughs> anyway yeah so we would go like one by one but like you know as a kid you're just sitting there and like you're watching your brother open his gift and then you're like oh my god what do i have next and you're just sitting there and like your mind's wandering at a million miles an hour trying to figure out what you're gonna get next yeah and then you and then you know your parents finally say like all right now you open that one and you're like yeah you grab the box you're ripping it apart real quick is is sweet did you guys ever make Christmas lists? Yeah. And how did you do so? Um, so, like, when we were really young, I know, um, like, my mom used to give us the Macy's catalog and tell us to, like, circle things or, like, put a star next to things that we liked. Um, I think it was Macy's or was it Sears? I don't know. What, who they who honestly, did the big Christmas book? That, they like, do. I know Sears did. I know Macy's did. Penny's did for a little bit. Target had, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel it's like there was th- one that was like kind of famous that we used to look at. It was probably Macy's. Yeah, I think it, was it was either Macy's, Macy's or Sears. Um, so that was one way. Um, my mom also did the like you know write out a list of things that you want and like put it in the mail. Um, and put it in the mail for Santa. You guys put your letters in the mail for Santa. Did you not? No. Who delivers them to Santa? I hate to break it to you, babe. Did you never believe in Santa? We did believe in Santa, but my grandparents really fucked that up real early. Which side? Which side do you think? (laughs) Because what we'd have to do is we always had to have our Christmas list ready to go before Thanksgiving. Because on Thanksgiving, my parents would take the list. They would take it to whoever's house we had dinner at, and they were like, okay, we're getting them this. Like, all the kids were, like, downstairs playing games or whatever, or outside or whatever. And they would sit around and be like, okay, we're getting them this. What do you want to get them? And so then my one side, like, my one set of grandparents would pick out what they were getting for uh, us, and then they'd take the list over to my other set of grandparents, and they are like, okay, well, this is what's left. This is what you can get if you want to get them this. And, like, we'd always, we'd always get so many questions about it, and Grammy and Pappy always, like, they also, I don't know if they ever rapped, but a lot of, a lot of, I I distinctly remember growing up, and I was given, like, it was for Christmas, but I feel like, for some reason, I distinctly remember just getting, like, a bag of, like, clothes and toys and everything in a black trash bag. And I was young and they're like, oh, this is sad. and it was like, this is what Santa brought for you. But anything you don't like, let us know. Grammy still has the receipts and we can return it. So like I was always like, I can't say I was skeptical because I always wanted to believe. And I, I held on a lot, a lot longer than I probably should have. But it's still like it, you know what I mean? Like at least every time we went up to Grammy and Pappy's, it was like, oh, Santa brought this. But then it was like, oh yeah, well I picked this out just for you, and that's just part was, of your traveling stuff, though. Like because I never had to travel because Christmas was almost always at my parents' house too. So like, and yeah. like also like my grandparents never tried to make me believe that santa dropped off presents with them to give to me or something like that like generally i feel like my parents had a pretty good idea of what we wanted for christmas 
and like they would just tell they would help mo and pop up and and nana, nana figure out something to, now, to get us how far away did nana live did she come to you guys as well for christmas so we spent christmas eve with my dad's side of the family um is that- i'm sure i'm sure nana probably came to some of our christmases but like she lived right at colmar okay right 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 oh that's right river. that's right she yeah. was at the uh the train station, station. Yeah. yeah that's right so yeah very close um so yeah like you know like my parents never and, and i was just talking to my mom about this recently but like um my parents never experienced what we do right now between your family and mine where like splitting holidays is more of a struggle with us because like you know it's either we're staying here or we're going two states away and like where like you know my parents when they were younger you know they could go see both sides of the family on a holiday and it would only be like a 10 minute like you know drive drive yeah so it like you know they, they just don't they never had to deal with that because both of their families live so close and it's it's weird because i have never known anything different so like knowing that we're doing how we're doing it with my family i think is a breeze because it's only two hours yeah we're not driving all the way over to pittsburgh taking like a five or six hour car ride over to the other side of the state where like i like don't know anyone it, you know what i mean i don't know it was yeah. just like it was a very different i think that then, i don't know there's just some something to the whole the whole santa story that you're given that just gives me a little bit of sadness i'm you sorry know? no i'm not I, don't apologize to me but like i don't i don't know i just like yeah i would I, hope to keep the spirit alive in our kids a little longer than than that and like you know i don't know like i I, see like it's hard because you'll never experience it now but like the whole individually rap thing and maybe you'll be able to experience it by watching some of the video i hope the home videos between that and and if we do that for our kids maybe i'll be be able to experience it through them exactly and and you know it could all be trial and error right so like you know our kids when we eventually have them we could wrap every gift for you know a few years and then if they don't if they don't really have the same reaction or a same experience to where like that doesn't add any excitement then like we can pick up on that and you know move to something else can i be real with you for a second Hmm. we're not doing the whole wrapping before our kid can walk why not do you know (laughs) first of all i feel have you ever seen a baby unwrap a gift it's adorable no i haven't and i feel like they just sit there and play with the paper instead of the gift itself that's fine (laughs) that's part of it oh my gosh man i don't know it's it feels like that's part of a, a part of christmas that i'm i'm missing like I, you know, I'm the youngest in the family except for Kylie, and I still remember Christmases where Kylie would just run around trying to open other people's gifts. <laughs> and like, well, I, that's the I thing. Like, like, was she a toddler at that point? Like two, three, four? I guess I don't know. I don't know anything about babies. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like toddlers, like up until they're like five or six, love going around and helping other people open presents yeah but i'm talking like if they're still crawling and just so like they can rip open some of my gifts or something they're so, probably more excited about the paper than the gift itself so your parents did they wrap your box though so you had to open the box well, or we were, was it, so so tell me what like your childhood experience so was. i'm gonna make it i'm thinking about making an instagram poll to to see how people feel about individually wrapped presents wrapping or... versus unwrapped yeah um so growing up we would have everything just very well why do you why are you wearing socks with holes in them it's because i'm waiting for my mom's christmas socks all right <laughs> <laughs> um i so we would come down and everything was very nicely laid out 
very well placed strategically so you could see everything you could see like a stack of cds and you could see you had three or four sweaters and then the, the bigger so, stuff i was thought in you the put them in the box growing up we didn't and then when we got older my mom would get two massive boxes and then everything that we got she would fit in the two boxes and then she would wrap the boxes and each person would get a different wrapping paper so she knew whose boxes were whose. Hmm. But it was only two boxes. And then as we open the box, then it's just like a whole stack of stuff inside the box. But that wasn't until we were older. Yeah. That wasn't until we were all out of our Santa phase. Okay. Then... In recent years, my mom found the Santa sacks. Yeah, so and so. So instead of the boxes, everything that goes in the sack is what we get. So as a child, things were laid out, though. They were all laid out. So like one year, I got a really big teddy bear, and so that would be that was like in the back on top of like a hamper because they got me like a clothes hamper. Yeah, and by the way, I want a disclaimer in this whole conversation with um, um, I know that mom listens to this and i don't think that she was wrong in any way with doing this this way oh and <laughs> it's, well i think when we were talking about it i think she said her santa never wrapped and i don't think her santa wrapped and i don't think my dad's santa wrapped so i think that was like an easy thing for them they're like oh yeah santa i think she did it maybe one year and she's like yeah never again but i know like, so one year I got like a teddy bear and he was sitting up on top of like a hamper that was flipped upside down and underneath the hamper were like, uh, like a pile of clothes. And then next to that, I had like a big box of whatever. And then I had things like leaning up against it so you could see everything. Um, and it was very well like laid out and that's how my stuff, I had a pile and then Zach had a pile and then Jake had a pile. And that's just kind of how it all, all went. And then as we got older, out of our Santa phase, that's when mom started just throwing things in boxes. Because it was probably a lot easier to move things around. So that's... Excuse me. That's how we always had Christmas. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm excited for you to see the home videos. Um, because they... Will be eye opening for many reasons, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I just always knew Santa as a rapper. He was a real G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about Christmas breakfast? Did you guys ever do anything special for breakfast, or did you ever have breakfast, or did you just go straight into ripping through the paper? Oh, straight through ripping the paper open. I mean, there's no way that you're going to get me to drop my excitement for 20 minutes to eat first. There's just no way. Well, so And there... also, we had to go to mass on Christmas morning, which mm. was, as a child, was the biggest bummer that I could ever go. You See, know. we never did Christmas morning mass. So we never did Christmas Eve mass until one year when we were like 20 or 21. Or when I was, like, 20 or 21. So when you say Christmas Eve Mass, like, are you talking about, like, Midnight Mass? Midnight Mass, oh, Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ, that's horrible. Uh, we did it once, um, and that was after a few few beverages and the Christmas Eve party, so that, that went well. Um, that's why we only did that one year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, typically we did a morning Mass on Christmas morning, and... It's similar to your experience where, like, you have all these toys or whatever, and then you can't play with them, and it's just so disappointing. But yeah, but that's only for, like, an hour. It's only for, like, an hour, yeah. And then, you know, for the most part... So, this is how Christmas morning went for us. Wake up. Uh, my dad goes down, does his whole routine. Me and Barry wait at the top of the stairs. Video of us coming down the stairs. We go into the to wherever the christmas tree is i think it's in it's in the living room it's been in the living room forever uh except there was one year where we did it in the family room um me and barry each have our other individual sides of the tree with i all was of our gonna presents. ask if it was like different sides or if you had different like wrapping papers or 
different sides. Okay. Uh, probably mixed wrapping papers. My mom just uh, rips, you know, she goes through a lot of wrapping paper. <laughs> so there's probably a different different set of wrapping paper on both sides, too. Um, we open up our gifts, usually individually, and then after we're done, my parents do their exchange. Um, and this is all in front of everyone. You know, everybody's watching everybody open their gifts individually, one at a time. Uh, and then after we're done that, uh, we have to get ready for mass. Uh, we're, we would usually have like 10 to 30 minutes to play with anything that we wanted to until we had to get ready for mass. We would go to mass for like an hour, come back. I would start to play with my toys again. Then my mom would be like, you have to vacuum the basement stairs because people are coming <laughs> over. People are coming over for Christmas. You need to vacuum the attic. Oh, no, like the, <laughs> vacuuming the stairs was like my main responsibility every year. And I just didn't un understand like, you know, do people come into your house and just like observe the stairs for dirt or anything? Like, I don't, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> still like you know I, I but i do get it because like our staircase does get dirty and now i vacuum that every once in a while but still still a pain it's just like you know when i got like my new guitar hero set and i was trying to play and then my mom's like vacuum the stairs i'm like <laughs> um so yeah then like i would do like a few chores or whatever for people coming over on christmas but they usually come over around two three o'clock so um you know, if I have a gift that's a toy that other people can play with too, um, then like, you know, we'll play with it at the Christmas party with like my cousins and stuff who come over. Um, if it's something more like individual, um, then usually that toy would probably just go away until the next day. Okay. But yeah, that was like mainly our Christmas. So, um, cause I know for us, so we always did Christmas eve mass but we always did like the children's mass that was at like three in the afternoon or four in the afternoon so the kids go somewhere else no it's like so i don't remember what it was at our lady of the chesapeake but i know at saint bernadette's the children's mass is they have like their children's choir come up and that's when they have like the kids if during the homily like the priest will sit down and he'll invite all the kids up to sit around and they'll like talk to them more or less and um, okay yeah i feel like they've done that before at our church too but they used to have at our church they used to have things for kids too where like you could send all of your kids up and they would take a group of the kids and bring them into like the back area of to the like, church to like a ccd kind of thing. kind of like to like a ccd thing yeah. while like the homily and stuff is happening yeah so chesapeake had stuff like that um but like this is specifically christmas mass where you have the kids singing and the like it's it's very it's much more oriented towards the kids and keeping their attention and that kind of stuff and it's usually really funny to watch the kids um so we would normally do the kids mass and then after that, we'd go and do dinner out somewhere, uh, out somewhere after mass um, with grandma and pa, because grandma and pa would come to mass with us. And then after that, we'd sometimes drive around and see the lights. Otherwise, we'd just go home and kind of hang out and BS until. So you never really hung out with any extended family except for grandma and pa on Christmas Eve? Not on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, grandma and pa would come over for Christmas, like. Uh, gift opening and everything we'd have uh, my dad would always get the colossal bagels from shoppers down the street he would get coupons every time he like spent x amount of money or got prescriptions or whatever so he'd get coupons for free donuts and so he'd always get like a dozen of donuts nice um and those things were massive yeah they, um they were huge not as big as a big kahuna though no not as big as a big we kahuna. never got a big kahuna no we didn't that's okay um, but we did that and then where's the excitement at get a little more excited when you're talking this is christmas we're talking about well because um it's hard because it, we <laughs> you're every like... year was every year was kind of different yeah it was so some years after grandma and pa came over and we opened all of our gifts we'd have to 
we'd be packed up the night before and so we'd have to pick if there's any clothes we wanted to take or we all could pick like a game or if we got something we wanted to take with us like when I got my CD player um or like my DVD player I would pack that up in my like bag that I was taking with me and then we'd pack in the car for like a six hour drive over to Pittsburgh um or and that then we would see like our extended family up there or we would also on the years we didn't do that we went up the day after Christmas we would sit uh grandma and pa would go home and then we'd go down to their house around two or three o'clock for dinner because pa always worked overnights usually he still had to work overnights on Christmas yeah um and he would like so he had to go to bed by like four or five o'clock so that way he could get up later on and get to work at a decent time so he would like nap so we always had an early dinner with um bill and carol and alex and all of them um carol's other kids and whenever they had significant others over or whatever um and so we would do that and then we, we would all just sit around and watch like football if that was on or whatever was going on we'd just kind of sit around we'd play games um but then in addition to all of that we also had christmas a couple days before like a another christmas a couple days before christmas because we would never be in the same place as judy and logan Mm. because they would go up to pittsburgh for christmas and then they would drive down usually the same day we were driving up so a few days before before they left for Pittsburgh, we'd also have to go over to Judy's house and then we would do our gift exchange there. And so like it it was fun and it was really enjoyable, but it was just it was a lot. It was a yeah, lot. It was that sounds never, stressful and it sounds it, complicated. It was never and... like everyone's in the same spot just kind of hanging out and enjoying. It was it was always a logistical nightmare. Because it, it, we were just trying to make everyone happy and make sure no one got left out. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... And that's why, I, that's why I really enjoy hosting and that's why I'm pushing for hosting. And I know you hate it when we have people here, but I don't, I don't want our kids to be exhausted by the I don't, I don't hate it when we have people here. I think it's different... I think it's different when we're hosting people that we know versus like, you know, something like really, my work, like your work thing. Like, you know, we don't know. Oh, I don't know anybody that's coming. So like, you know, I feel like we have to be extra prepared, like extra clean in the house, all this other stuff, just because like, I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit of fuzziness on that boundary when you have like family over and stuff like they're not going to really care if you're your stairs have a little bit of dirt on them (laughs) um but yeah but like that's why that's why i want to or i hold myself to a higher standard and that's and that's totally fair and i I don't know and i can agree with that but i know that's why i really enjoy and i'm really pushing for hosting christmas here and why last year i was such an annoyance with asking your parents to come over and hang out here because when we do have kids i and it it's weird but in like in a good way because I'm not used to everyone getting along. Your parents get along with my parents and my grandparents yeah. and and I can have everyone in the same room and there's not like weird tension or anything. And so it's really enjoyable to be able to have everyone here and then when we have kids I I don't want to have to put them through what well, are we going to stay here or are we going to drive down to maryland or do we have to do the split thing it like... really depends on it, it i mean at some point there's going to be contention somewhere right because I... you know you have two brothers that live in two totally different areas right so yeah. when they have a significant other um or a family then and it's I know... either are we going to do something individually and are they going to come to us or are we going to go to them or are we not going to see each other on the holidays or like yeah and it's you know like right now it's a little less complicated because it's just us because it's just us but like you know eventually other siblings of ours will have spouses and potentially yeah. children and stuff and then that complicates everything and i and i all over again and i understand <laughs> that but i also 
it's one of those things that I don't want, and this is going to sound bad, but your mom doesn't see Uncle Jim and Aunt Renee very other than like the very rare occasion. Not not often. She sees Mike and and Jen. Often, no, though. I'm not talking. I I said Jim and Renee. There's got to be effort from both sides, though. I I so, I like, know, but I, but you know what I mean. I think like, my mom has it tough, especially around the holidays, because she she's trying. She she tries to get everybody. She pretty much does everything that she does for mom and papa. Um. And, like, she tries to host something at her house so that, you know, her siblings come to them and then everybody's there for mom and pop up or, you know, they're there to see each other too, but she really wants everybody to come see mom and pop up. And I think that, you know, we'll, we'll see how that changes in the future, right? Like, yeah, you but know, as time moves on. So the reason the reason I brought up Jim and Renee and Kylie and everyone down in Maryland is because your mom and all that they all don't get together very often. They don't, and no. I feel like that's something I don't want to happen between like us and Zach because right now Zach's the one that lives furthest away. Yeah. And so wherever he ends up landing, if he ever gets married and has a family and everything, like, that's obviously something we'll have to take into account. But I also know that I don't I don't want it to be like I'm not going to see all of my family during the holidays. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like you're I feel like your mom and uncle Jim, they've like they do their best but at the same time they're like oh yeah like i'm probably not gonna see jim this year you know what i mean they used to come and uncle jim and renee used to come with their kids you know to our christmas every year and they would stay at my parents house but eventually you know everybody goes to college and moves on and people are everywhere and now you know they probably did it more for the kids at that point but now like that everyone's older and you know half of their family is in europe now for uh, air force and stuff like i don't know they really should they use they do make a trip down so pretty much every time they come to visit mom and papa my mom sees them too and i'm sure they'll do it at some point yeah this holiday season but, but they don't come for like the celebration anymore and and that's uh and that's the thing i just i don't want to I don't want to have to give that up between my siblings, but I just know that's also going to be something else we got to figure out because if Barry moves to West Virginia and is living in the mountains, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that for Christmas. Are we going to go visit him at some point? I don't Barry, know. He needs to put a bathroom in on his property Barry, first. Barry, don't move to West Virginia. Not yet. Yeah, please. I'm not taking a dump out in the woods unless it's, you know, on a, at least I need a toilet seat, you know? Or he needs a lot of beers. Toilet seat and like a bidet would be preferable if you could put <laughs> one in too. God, you sound so bushy right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out in the future. Yeah. But I mean it's just something you can't really plan for. I know, but it's you never know what's gonna happen. But it's one of those things if I can have my Christmas where everyone's here while I can have it, I wanna try and take it while I can because I don't know what the future will hold for us having to travel. Indeed. Do you ever have a favorite Christmas gift? <sighs> favorite Christmas gift. That's that's a hard one. Or memorables. Any honorable mentions? Um I mean the 3D printer was the 3D printer was awesome. I I mean I still use that all the time and that's been two three years now um well actually they got me my first 3d printer like my first ever one um and that that was awesome and then um you know that technology got outdated pretty quickly because that was like one of the first consumer 3d printers and then like the one that i have now that they gave me um is still like my main workhorse printer to today so that's that's a huge one um 
Guitar Hero World Tour or whatever, the one with the drums and okay. the guitar and the microphone. Great. Um, Barry does a great rendition of Misery Business. Uh, very, very good on vocals, by the way. Uh, I was the drummer. He was on vocals and somebody else was on guitar. Maybe Mike was on <laughs> guitar. Um, but yeah, that, that was awesome. Uh, one time I got this little foam gun shot these foam foam rings out oh, mm-hmm. so funny my dad tells me first thing he does when i get it he says do not point it at somebody's face do not shoot anybody in the face and what's the first thing that i do i launch one of these little foam discs and it hits barry right in the face and he took it away and i sat there and cried and you gotta learn your lesson i somehow. deserved it <laughs> i deserved it but yeah that was a. Uh, that was that was pretty cool one time i got a toy helicopter and i flew it in the family room and got it stuck in the tree <laughs> sounds familiar uh yeah i did fly a drone and get it stuck in your hair one year that was not christmas that was it was not just, christmas that it was around christmas it was but just something just, that happened but yeah he was just having similar a similar story it got tangled up and had to fix that um uh, man I mean, there's, yeah, I just, I love Christmas every year. Um, I just didn't know if there were any, like, notable ones where you're like, yes. I feel like there's been a year where we got, like, like, I think our Xbox 360 was a Christmas gift. Yeah. I don't know. What about you? I know. So my favorite Christmas gift of all time was when my dad, so my dad every year would make us go on a scavenger hunt. Oh, okay. I have a feeling I know what this was. You probably have already heard the story. Um, But every year we had to go on a scavenger hunt. And the one year the scavenger hunt led us to uh, the entertainment center above the TV, which is where all of us had, I can't say all of us because I don't think Jake did. I don't know what Jake had, but I know Zach and I got um, NV3s, which are our phones with the like flip open to yep. text. And we had, my dad had gotten us unlimited texting. And Jake didn't get one that year? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it was, he was too young. Maybe? That's rough. That's a rough, that's a rough time because I feel like the cell phone was like, one of the largest gifts of that time in your life. And I feel like I, I being literally, the only sibling to not get one. Just I be- literally cried. I was so happy about it. Um, and the, the unlimited texting had already been put into place when they told me I had unlimited texting. That's nice. So... <laughs> Um, yeah. I didn't run up the bill. Yeah, I but no, I to, it was I prefer to send all the texts out before it came. <laughs> I I do feel bad about uh, for Jake though because that was the one thing. So Zach and I, being so close in age, we were only separated by a grade. So a lot of our gifts were very similar. Where Jake was three grades below Zach. So and that was just because of how our birthdays fell. But Zach and I would end up getting similar gifts and Jake wouldn't or Jake would get like lumped in with like stuff that Zach was doing for birthdays and everything. This is a whole nother topic we can get into some other time. (laughs) Um, But no, I feel like there were some times when like Zach and I would get things and then Jake was just kind of like hanging out because he either wasn't old enough or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, But yeah, so I got the phone. Which, what kind of scavenger hunt was it? So it was like, were you giving hints or like riddles? Yes. Or, yes. So my dad always, and I, again, this is something I felt I feel really bad for now looking back because we are complete dicks to Jake about it. Um, but Jake was always so smart. So what it was, it was like you know those. <sighs> this guy, they're they're like word puzzles where it's like you do a crossword and like the one the number or the 
Wow. The letters is... in the, the bolded boxes go in like a certain order or it was a word scramble and it would spell out a riddle of a clue that you would have to go find and then you would go down and find it. And then there's an envelope there and inside the envelope there were more papers with more of those types of like clues or like things to think about. Um, it, it, it was like a lot of like brain teaser stuff. And then it, all the like answers would spell out another clue for you to go find another brain teaser. Did you ever find the gift before you finished solving the puzzle? Not that I'm aware of. Mm. Not that I remember. That means he had good hiding spots. But it, I would, and looking back, we were such dicks to Jake. But he, because he was so smart, and he would literally just look at a puzzle and be like, "Oh yeah, this is the dryer," and we're like. We didn't even read the instructions yet. Like, how do you know not only what the riddle says, but then, like, and so it got to the point where we wouldn't let him, like, work with us and everything, or, like, you can't do this with us because you're ru ruining all the fun and we can't figure this out. And it, it wasn't his fault. Um, Sounds like your dad just needs to make a more complicated riddle. Well, and then what he did, I think at one point he, like, had us split up. And, like, gave us all the same puzzles but in different orders. So we were all running around to different places. But That's smart. Um, but Jake probably beat you out on all the puzzles typical. anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it was – it was, then, yeah, it was frustrating in the moment because we're, like, we're trying to do this. And Jake just looks at it and he's, like, oh, it's here. And we're, like, cool, but but we wanted to try and do the puzzle. And, like, I don't know. Are there any – this is kind of switching topics. Are there any notable house decorations that stayed throughout the years of you being a child all the yes. way up through adulthood? And there is one decoration that I can't find anywhere that I love. So my parents have, and I think they got it as like, not a wedding gift, but like one of their first Christmases together. It's a toy chest. And when you open the toy chest, you have a bunch of little figurines and they have mallets in their hands. And they swing to, like, hit different bells, different chimes. And they play, like, 26 different, like, Christmas Oh, so a songs. music box? It's like a music box. That's and cool. it's, like, this big. And I want one so bad. And they don't make them anymore. And I can't find them anywhere. And my parents have it, the one. And I love it. That is my hands-down favorite Christmas decoration wow. that they have. I was not expecting that answer because, you know, I just, I didn't know. You yeah. Didn't, you never told me that. I, n I never showed it to you? No. No? No. I don't think so. That, was, that is my favorite one. We also used to have a Tigger. Um, it was like a, a – it, it like rotated, but it was like Tigger on his tail and something. He was like holding a gift or something and had a hat. When you turned it on, he like like rotated or whatever. That one was also really cool. I think that one ended up breaking though, but the the t the music box has stood the test of time, and nice. I love that one. Nice. What about you? There's a few. Um, so my parents have the Santa and Mrs. Claus that have the candles in their hands, and mm -hmm. they like slowly open and close. That's a very popular one, especially with Barry. Uh, he would get so mad every time my mom took them down every year. <laughs> um, stockings. Uh, all the stockings that we have in our house are made. Aunt Mary made them all. Yes, I was gonna say your stock. Our stockings are. They were like we bought them at the store, and then we like tried to decorate them. Um, but your stockings are are much more. They're all valuable. Hand, what are they? Crocheted or uh, knitted? I don't, I don't, I don't know, know if they're knitted or crocheted. Yeah, but I want to say crocheted. They're all handmade. And when me and Jamie got married, um, Aunt Mary was it was, was it when we got married when or when we, we got were engaged. engaged? Aunt Mary sent us two stockings that she made she for us. She sent us two stockings. And then she made us one for lava, and she too. she made one for lava. I said, I said something, like, in, as a passing joke. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, now that we have lava, we need to get one for lava or something like that. And, yep. and she made one for lava. So now we have one for the whole family. The whole family. And then I also have my stocking that's at my parents' house, too. Um, what did my mom use for yours last year? I think I think I she, she did used she use Susie's, Susie's for you? Yeah. I think she used Susie's. Um Yeah, so the stockings are big. Um other than that, the one 
the one decoration that I remember because I had to put it together a lot of times was um, they made these glass Christmas trees where it just has a light bulb in the center of it. And then it has a bunch of holes in it and you have little colored um, like bulbs, little they're not bulbs, but they're just like plastic bulb shaped things. And uh, yeah, you put those in all the holes and then it lights up a bunch of different colors. Um, Yeah, that and then just generally lights like I would help my dad with putting all the lights up on the house and they had lights in all the all the windows. They had all these like figurines and. Mm -hmm santa faces and reindeers and stuff that they would put in their windows this year they switched the candles though like we have i like the candles yeah it's very simple <clears throat> and uh gives a good look it's nice it's classic if you forget to take them down when you take down all of your other christmas decorations it's not a huge problem yeah um now did your family ever do like inflatables or any like figurines out on the on the lawn <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that so we not for not for Christmas or not okay. for the holidays, no. Uh, but my dad swears that he is the <laughs> one who invented the inflatable. He made an inflatable pumpkin. Um, it had to be like when my parents were dating or married, um, and he, you know, built it from scratch. He like built a um, like a fan, I guess, that he would put in the front yard and fill up. I don't know if it was a trash bag or whatever it was to make a pumpkin. And then he drew like a face on it. Um, and he, he swears to this day that he is the one who invented that. And somebody saw it on his front lawn and patented it and made a ton of money off of it. <laughs> so, you know, we could have been rich. It's okay. <laughs> but no, no inflatables. Um, though I did see that Instagram reel, the guy that buys 20 foot snowman, but then their storm hits and, uh, Poor, poor frosty yeah poor guy no we always had we always <laughs> had inflatables um the one thing we always used to have we used to have like a net of lights that we'd put over like the bushes in the front okay yeah but they were like the really big bulbs that were colorful they weren't like the simple white ones mm-hmm. um so we always had those and we had a santa that was about maybe this tall um and it was like hard plastic okay yeah that like the light came from the bottom yep. and everything. And that thing was so old. I don't even know if it's in existence anymore, but like it was so sun bleached. Speaking of that, Mama and Pop Up's lights, and I have to knock on wood here, but they have light bulb or icicle lights that I hang on their house every year. And they've had them for over 20 years now. Which is amazing. I mean, you, you could buy a set of icicle lights and you might get three to five years out of them, maybe, even if you get that. And we have well over 20 years on these things, and they're still pumping till this day. And you haven't, have you had to like switch out any bulbs? Yeah, or? we have replaced bulbs on it all the time, and that's fine. But the, the lights themselves are still from, yeah, probably early 2000s nice. or possibly in the 90s. Um, which is wild. Did you guys have any light up deer? Cause that's like a holiday thing too. We had, I think we had one or two maybe, but it was funny. So one of our neighbors down the street had light up deer and they shot him. No, no. <laughs> but they had light up deer and one was like looking and one was like drinking out of a pond. And what they would do is they would take white and blue lights and make like a, a little like pond looking like thing of water Mm -hmm. out of the they would make that out of the lights in their front yard so the one with the head down actually looked like it was drinking out of the water nice yeah and one year someone i don't know who but went and turned the deer around so that their butts were facing the front the street (laughs) (laughs) so so we always had to be on guard with our with our deer after that we had deer and uh you know ours just licked the grass or whatever because we didn't have the cool water lights but yeah i think those those would always go bad um because we would put them up in like an attic or something in the in the garage and then eventually like mice would chew on the 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 wires and stuff for some reason i feel like either the one we had moved or the one our neighbor had moved like the head moved or whatever yeah they used to have moving head ones too the the problem with those is that like 
everything else kind of goes into a box when you when you put them in yeah. storage but those were hard to store uh which means you usually leave them open As and exposed is, yeah. and then you know you get critters in there and ruining your stuff that is but true. that was notable decoration you know probably when i was a child like 10 or 12 or something did you ever help your mom with christmas cookies i definitely ate them that i know <laughs> uh i can't say that i i can't say that i've helped do you have is there a specific recipe for anything that anything during the holidays that you my mom enjoy. makes my mom makes a dank chocolate chip cookie not dank in the way that you know <laughs> some people might take that not but. not how the youths are speaking of it now yeah yeah no no drugs in those but they <laughs> taste so good yeah the and only they're, drug was they're always so soft that's like i don't know how she does it but all of her cookies are always so soft so her chocolate chip cookies are awesome and then um she recently like within the last five years or so probably has been making those sugar peanut butter, peanut butter kiss, kiss cookies. cookies and those once again are so soft i don't know what she does under baking them or i don't know what but always so soft and i eat tons of them all every of them. year she gave us a huge bag of them last year and, and went i through all of them i think i ate probably 30 to 40 of these very large sugar cookie kiss things in probably three days i went through all of them. yeah he did go through them all i have a sweet tooth you no yeah no growing up my mom always i want to say it was around christmas it may have been around thanksgiving but i always thought it was around christmas she would make apple strudel she would use my great grandmother's recipe. So Grammy's mom, Nami. Nami had a, a, an apple strudel recipe that she had like handwritten out and everything. So that's always what we and we always had to help my mom out because stretching the dough for the apple strudel. And it was it was a your lot. mom's poor wrists. Oh my gosh, let me tell you. <laughs> but so we had an apple peeler core thing um, that would like hook to the side of the table and you like pressed an apple onto it and you just kept rotating yep. it and it would like peel it and yep. then it would like spiralize it um, or we would just peel it because then you for the, the strudel you had to shred the apple. You know they make those for KitchenAid now. I feel like I did see that. An apple spiral or... Spiralizer or, or whatever. Or spiralizer, yeah. Um, but the... Like, for the apples... The apples for the... Strudel had to be shredded. So we'd have... Shredded apples? Shredded. Huh. So we Never would have, seen that before. You literally would take it to the shredder and just... To a, to a cheese grater? Yeah, something? like a cheese grater. Yeah. Um, and we mom would make the dough and then the dough would like rise and then we had to cover the entire table with a fitted sheet because we'd have to put like flour down and everything to make sure the dough didn't stick and she would roll it out roll it out and then once it got to a point we had to pancake the dough between our hands and like lightly like toss it and stretch it out but we couldn't let it like rip or get holes in it because then it wouldn't keep the apples in yeah so it was a lot of patchwork and everything to get it as stretched out as thin as possible to get it to cover the whole table because then we would we'd put all the apples down and then we'd roll it and she would have one of those big jelly pans kind of like what i have yep. for the cookies and we would have to snake it <laughs> so it would fit into the pan so That's she wild. would make she would make pumpkin rolls and she would make apple strudel and the apple strudel was nice. really good so I think I have that recipe somewhere. I'm just not brave enough to brave enough to try it yet. Yeah. That might be a when we get a new kitchen thing. Yeah. But it would be something nice to try. Well, if you made it to this point, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And thanks for sticking with us all these all these episodes later. Yeah, we're Honestly, you got through last week's episode. Good on you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, if you're still listening after <laughs> that point, then holy crap, nice job. Um, this is, I don't remember, but this is probably like episode 25 now. This will um, be so. Possible. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
I think I said that the next one we were going to record, which was last episode, I think I said that was going to be 24 because I was like, I think that's a milestone because like the that original. Makes, that makes sense because that's about halfway through the year and we started in like July. Sometime. Yeah. And like the original, one of the original intents of us having these conversations were to, to be able to have our kids listen to us to just talk about different parts of our life. And to have 24 hours of straight conversation of us talking is kind of a big milestone. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Cool for us. Yeah. Boom. Accomplished. Anyway, um, if you have any fun Christmas stories or recipes or cocktail recipes, shoot them over to us at diaries of a working couple at gmail.com. Or you can slide into our DMs at diaries of a working couple on Instagram. I might try and make a few more reels slash posts. We'll see. Yeah. Who TV. knows? And I say that about every episode, but one of these days I'll get motivated. We'll see. TBD. You know he's off for the rest of the month, so he might might be able to do it. Yeah. So thanks for sticking around. And I think this is the last episode of the year. So we'll see you in the new year. Yeah, we'll catch you next year. All right. Bye, guys. See ya.